We called an audible. <laughs> Nothing like going on the fly. God bless each and every one of you. Well, it's, it's an honor to work with uh, Councilwoman uh, Kruver. There is an initiative that's going to be uniquely on your ballot if you live in Pierce County this November. And it has to do with the county prosecutor. And fortunately, um, Senator Gildon just brought up how crucial these things are. And, and one of the litmus tests that we have for knowing whether or not you want to vote for a county prosecutor is how transparent are they going to be? What values are they going to stand for? And in the statistics around whether or not they're actually going to prosecute crimes is one of the key things that you want to make sure they are telling you in the voter pamphlet statement and when they're going out before you. And so there's an initiative to remove some of the transparency from them. And right now in Pierce County, you have the ability, if you so choose, to run for county prosecutor to not be or to run as a nonpartisan. But what many of you don't know is one of the reasons why every county in the, in the state and even our state attorney general was made a partisan race was so that you had more transparency with regard to the platform that they stood for. Will they vote to prosecute crime? And so the initiative seems pretty innocuous and pretty simple. We just want to make it so that you cannot run as a partisan in an office. And it seems at the, at the very face level that that might be a good thing, except that it removes transparency for you. How many of you are tired of looking at your ballot and looking at judicial figures and not being able to understand from their voter pamphlet statement what they're going to stand for? <laughs> Folks, don't do that with your county prosecutor. Councilwoman Kruver and I both uh, wrote along with, it's a, in a bipartisan group with a former state auditor and Pierce County Auditor uh, Brian Sontag, wrote the opposing view, and we, and, and we strongly recommend that you reject that. So um, that's the update on that. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk about it. That's a very crucial issue that's coming in an off year. And make no mistake, getting our council back into a majority would have protected you from that even being put on the ballot. Okay, we need to get our council back into a majority. And, and I guess I will just say one thing. I know that Jim is going to come up, Representative Walsh, and, and he's going to do an amazing job at telling you what, what a path forward would look like. And, and you're going to see one of the sharpest minds in Olympia tell you that. Let me just tell you what the opposite of that's going to be really quick. Senator Gildon mentioned Senate Bill 5121. It's a bad bill. Let me tell you about Senate Bill 5122. It didn't make it to the floor. I'm not sure, I don't think that any of... My colleagues saw the bill if they weren't in the Senate. Actually, Senator Gildon saw it. That bill was supposed to go to public safety, committee that I serve on. What the, what the Democrat Party did was they routed it to early learning. But what the bill seeks to do is remove any criminal penalty whatsoever for any child that's under the age of 13. That includes murder. It includes rape. It includes any crime. In fact, we dubbed it the, the Cartel, Mafia, and Gang Recruitment Act of 2021. That bill passed the Senate on a party-line vote. It passed and was forced out of the House committee and is now sitting in rules, which means it's, you know, if the, if the path is that long from A to Z to get to, to pass a bill, it's almost there. Folks, if we don't put forward the right path to go forward, that's what they're going to continue to do. Folks, we ran amendments on that too. We ran amendments that said, well, you say that it would not be a crime if a child that's under the age of a 12-year-old kid murders another child. But they, they said, well, that's okay because we're providing a provision that says if it's murder one or murder two, that means intended murder, you plotted it out. Because, again, the, the justification for why you wouldn't prosecute this is because kids 12 and under don't know the difference between right and wrong. Well, they, they want to let them vote, but they, but they don't know right and wrong. But then they said, but if, in fact, it was murder one or murder two, so there was an intent and, an, and a chance to plan it out, then we would allow a prosecutor to challenge the default ruling that they cannot be held liable. So we ran some amendments, amendments and we said, well, let's apply the same ruling to rape one and rape two. Rape one and rape two means that someone planned out, they sought after someone, and they raped another person with malice and they rejected it. They rejected it outright. 
And you're trying to tell me that a child that's 12 years old that pries upon another child and rapes that child shouldn't be charged with rape. I disagree. And I think you do too. That's the bill that's on the deck right now, folks. Here's the scariest part. We ran another amendment. The amendment said, let's drop the age back down below 10. They rejected it, but in testimony that is available publicly for every one of you here tonight is the testimony that said, well, that's not the direction we want to go. We want to raise the age to under 19 years old. Folks, that's on the deck. I'll give it back. I could talk all night about this, but you want to hear what Jim's got for you as a solution. Folks, we got to stand up now. Thank you. God bless you.